Hi, I'm Evelyn Hicks, Director of Clinical Education for Pulse Medical, distributors of Endoform and Hydrofera Blue. To my far left, I have my colleague Pam. She is a master's prepared registered nurse who is certified in wound and ostomy. And to my immediate left, I have my colleague Giselle. She is a registered nurse and a certified wound specialist. Thanks, ladies, for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. This is the dream team for a pulse. <laughs> we want to talk to you about Endoform. We have clinicians who often contact us with regards to how does Endoform look in the wound? What should we expect? Give us some examples of how you're educating the customers about Endoform. One of the most exciting things about Endoform is it really can be a protease indicator. Because as you know, in wounds, we have, in chronic wounds especially, there's a high level of protease and they're highly inflammatory. Um, when you put Endoform in the wound, it can be a protease indicator in that when you put it in, when you go back the next week to evaluate the wound, when the Endoform has been dissolved in the wound, you know that that wound had a high level of protease. So as we see the Endoform completely gone, we know that the proteases are high. What can we expect if we continue to use Endoform? Pam, what are some suggestions you give to the customers? Well, this is case one where um, you see on day one and they've checked the wound at day three and at day seven, there's absolutely no Endoform left in that wound. And that would tell you that wound had a high level of protease. Giselle, what's your experience? Yeah, I agree. I know that one of the things that we see and we know, Endoform actually empowers our nurses, our clinicians, to use a product to indicate what's going on in the wound bed. We know that protease activity really kind of triggers whether or not that wound is stuck in inflammation or is in proliferation. So as Pam said earlier, in this particular picture here, this wound is stuck in the inflammatory phase. We still need to modulate those proteases were still in phase number one. Right, now often we hear people say uh, proteases are bad, but indeed we know clinically they're good, it's just that they need to be in balance, right? Sure. Initially when they look at the wound bed, and one of the first things that I would suggest to them is to potentially apply two pieces initially at the start, because you don't know if that wound has a high level of protease and that endoform has been dissolved rapidly in the wound. And so the suggestion is early on to apply two pieces so that you have covered that wound for that entire week. As that wound progresses to phase two, yes. um, which is the proliferative phase, mm -hmm. and it's modulated those, those protease levels, um, then I would suggest applying just the one piece. And that is where we would go to the second case, where you do see some residual endoform in that wound. And that's when you know the wound bed has been balanced, those proteases are back in balance, and when you start seeing residual endoform in the wound. Yeah, I agree. This is a great case because here you can see really no endoform, just very small amounts. Here you can see a moderate amount. So that's going to help the clinician as an indicator that those proteases are being balanced. Mm -hmm. So what I would typically recommend here is definitely do not remove what's residual in there. So let me pause right here. That's the number one question I think mm -hmm. I get as a clinician, and I know you ladies are getting it too. Giselle, go into detail about what is important about leaving that endoform in place. Sure, so absolutely. When we talk about phase one, phase two, phase one meaning it's stuck in that inflammatory phase. So actually the endoform is being used as a sacrificial substrate. When we get to the point where we start seeing some residual endoform, we now go from phase one to phase two action. We're in that proliferative phase. It's now being used as a scaffold for granulation tissue to be built upon. So with this residual endoform, if you remove what's there, you're removing that scaffold. So what I would instruct in this case, actually rehydrate what's there and apply more. My suggestion is the endoform that hasn't incorporated, it's okay to remove that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You clean the wound as normal. The endoform that you see incorporating in, it is very important to leave that in the wound because the, um, fibroblasts and very important molecules are attached to that. And you don't want to take out yes. what you're trying to recruit to that wound bed. That's a great point. I think it's important that we talk to our clinicians because they're so busy and they have ancillary staff that is assisting them. So this could be a great tool to help their wound care techs and the other people that are helping them prep the wound bed to know how to identify this. Giselle, walk us through what you see in this situation. 
So basically here in day number one, you actually do see minimal residual endoform. What we find, um, we get a lot of questions. Endoform may look many different ways in the room bed, yes. many different colors. It may be dark yellow, it may look like slough, dark green. This is even black. Some people may mistaken it for Eshgar. Mm -hmm. But what we know is that based upon the wound exit, you may get many different shades of endoform. Another thing that we also instruct our clinicians is assess the wound, assess the peri wound. Mm -hmm. It's going to send messages whether or not this is great healing or if we have risk of infection and things like that. It's when people see the different colors, they may say, oh my gosh, this wound is starting to become clinically infected. Absolutely not. Everything else, all of the other indicators are telling us that this wound is healing. You're seeing some granulation tissue coming through and the peri wound area looks good. And absolutely the wound margins are getting smaller. This is absolutely um, clinically uh, pictures that we get um, asked a lot yes. because they start to see the endoform incorporating in and that can look very, very different. Yes. It can look like slough, but it's not slough. You can see the granular buds um, popping through that endoform and what it actually is is endoform incorporating into that wound bed. And in this case, it's very important to continue applying the endoform on a weekly basis as we um, as instructed. Yeah. What do you see, Giselle? I do. And you know, one of the questions that we often get asked, how do you know if it's slough mm -hmm. versus yes. endoform? Definitely. So one of the things that we do know, if we look at this case right here, if they take a cotton tip applicator you use and it'll be able to shift easily, it's endoform. We know that slough is stringy and attached to the base of the wound. So I totally do agree with you, Pam. I would rehydrate what's on there and apply more endoform. Thank you, A Pulse Clinical Dream Team. I appreciate your input into this video. As a recap, we want to remind you, Endoform is a valuable tool to help you understand your levels of proteases that are in the wound bed. If you need more information about Endoform, please, you can visit www.endoform.com.